Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Diaphone. I made this video for a very selfish reason. I do coaching on Medify and it's really fun. I really enjoy it, but I've been having a lot of people come in with the same issues. And instead of being people with one-on-one, -on -one, I kind of want to have people come with me with different issues. So today we're going to be talking about why you aren't making it into Celestial and the common things that I see that players should be implementing into their game and focusing their training time on in order to get into Celestial. A lot of it, I think, comes down to you, you'll see a common theme here it's people focus on the wrong things in order to improve all right so the first thing i want to talk about that I, I don't think people focus on enough is just getting your combos down and after you hit the combo making sure that you do a proper knockdown right a lot of people will you know but they might know their basic bread and butter so basic bread and butter with viking might look something like this but then oftentimes what I'll see is that after this Kabari knockdown, instead of going for something like a safe jump, they'll just do a run forward and 5S. There's something a lot more optimal you can do, which is you can do a safe jump, which also avoids, you know, the opponent DPing and gives you additional protection against gold burst or other things, right? The other issue that I see, people just drop their combos way too much. That, that's really what it comes down to. This, for example, is a basic bread and butter with biking. Lowering that is perfectly fine. It's a really easy to combo to do. Oftentimes though, I, I find floor 10 people try to go for like really fancy shit. And this isn't even that fancy, but just to kind of show you, like there's the ra these routes, right? You don't need that kind of combo in order to get into Celestial. And it's a lot more technical. It's a lot more challenging. It's a lot more prone to dropping. Think of the damage you lose if you do something like this and you miss your combo. Not only do you miss out on 45 damage, which is like a tenth of Bridget's health bar, you miss out on the follow-up situation that can lead into almost death, depending on the character that you're playing. So this is a huge momentum swing, dropping your combo. If you focus some of your practice time on making sure you execute these combos more consistently, a good ratio is like having it 90% down in training mode is what's gonna get you to get it down consistently enough in match. I think you should focus on that. You focus on the combos that work, not the combos that are super optimal, right? Just another example of Eno. I'll see sometimes people will do something like this, right? Where this combo does a good amount of damage, but it doesn't really get you uh, a mix-up opportunity, right? Getting the mix-up, getting the knockdown situation for almost every character is way more important than that, like, that couple extra digits of damage. It's really bad, yet the amount of people I see that do stuff like this is just blows my mind. Another combo that's easy but doesn't lead into a good knockdown situation would be something like this, right? You could do a combo like this. And while that combo does work, you always want to make sure you're ending in the right special to get knocked down. So with Bridget, for example, this could just be, you know, ending in, ending in this, or, you know, even if you want to be a little fancy, you can end in uh, this yo-yo and go for like a safe jump, right? Some people will either go for like really suboptimal stuff. Like, for example, like a biking player will do like this and then they'll go into that. And like, you don't see a high level biking player do that. You should try to be like stealing what you can from high level players and like use just a small subset of their, how do I say, mix up repertoire, right? Instead of trying to like come up with these like really fancy, okey situations. But what's the acronym? Keep, keep it simple, stupid, kiss, right? If you can keep it simple and, and be effective, you should do that, right? So. For example, this is very effective Oki, it safe jumps, it leads into additional pressure. Viking do some really cool stuff where she can do like cross up Yuzansen, right? And it looks really cool. The issue is this this is kind of hard. It, it doesn't work on everyone as consistently. It gets heavy weights, it's much more prone to dropping. You don't necessarily need to learn this in order to get into Celestial. Just focus on the basics and refine them really well. The other thing is you don't need a seven layer mix up. Bridget can do a lot of cool things after this, right? She can go for a double overhead. She can go for a single overhead. You can go for a JD overhead. You can go for an empty low. You can go for an empty throw. As a floor 10 player or before that, all you really need to do is learn like a variation or two, right? At high level, yes, there's merit to doing pretty much all of these, but when you're at a lower level, just mixing up between the two easiest options, which is JD or empty low, you get your 50-50. 
and just get really good at that that's all you really need you don't need to implement all these other options a lot of times like a beginner player they're gonna they're gonna see a situation like i think they're gonna super they're gonna back off and then they either don't bait the super or they just like gave up complete initiative right where instead if you have your one or two options and you know what which options beat which options i can do this jd do it the right timing and get a full punish right it's all about like making the best out of the few options that you have and understanding why each option works. There's so so many intricacies to just the bare basics of this game that you don't really need to go above and beyond and learn all this crazy tech because you can make the basics work really well. So let's talk about some other random stuff that I, that I see. This is just going to be like, I don't want to belabor these points, but these are more habits that I see. People will burst in really bad timings. The main thing I think if you're a new player or you're trying to get Celestia, you should avoid this hero burst, right? A situation like this, you're Milia, you have a large life deficit, and then you're like, all right, screw it. And then you lose the round and you don't have burst for the next round. It's actually really debilitating and you basically just wasted your burst for, for no reason, right? Ideally, the strategy should be use your burst right away in the first round. And then if, you know, if you win the first round, then use it in the second round and then try to save the burst for the end of the last match and try not to get burst baited, right? So what do I mean by getting burst baited? So some people will see themselves get hit and they'll burst right away. Some people like burst baiting, some people don't. I think at the highest level, burst baiting is not that good of a strategy because if you burst bait, you drop the combo. And we talked about earlier in this video about how bad drop combos are. And the best way to deal with burst baiting is just wait a little bit before you burst. I've seen 410 people that like never burst. I've seen 410 people that never use FD. I've seen 410 people that never use Y or C. I've seen 410 people that will only use their meter for one thing. The most recent Bridget I coached would only use their meter for Roger Super, right? While Roger Super has some use, it's not the only thing you want to use meter on. So some other examples you could use meter on besides like FD, you know, you can use Scooter RC into a combo, Scooter RC for a mix up, right? And every character has multiple different ways to use RC. Another thing they weren't doing was DP RC, which is obviously very strong. Make sure you have a couple different ways to use your meter instead of just the one way. And if like, let's say you're not sure when to do it, the best way to learn when to do something is just try it out and match and see how it works, right? You're not sure how to FD, just try randomly FDing. There, there's a lot of things you can do to learn the game. I think one of the best ways to, to learn is just try new things out and match. Making sure you master the system mechanics because they're all really strong and really useful is very important as opposed to like, you know, learning specific matchup stuff. If I'm saying to focus on that, what shouldn't you focus on, right? I would not worry about instant blocking until after you make Celestial consistently. Honestly, it's really hard for not that much reward. I rarely instant block outside of a few moves and even the highest level players still mess up IB sometimes. And while it is a valuable skill to learn, the amount of reward you get for the amount of time you put in is just not worth it before you get to Celestial level. Even stuff like, yeah, Ram, Rekka, that's really good to IB. I don't think it's worth doing before Celestial right i've talked to people doing metify where they'll know like the exact frame data of of a character they don't play i think it's actually not that beneficial to learn because making sure you get your combos down and your combo execution down and making sure that you understand the basic mix-up is way more important than understanding on like what's the optimal way to defend against Eno, right you just need to learn the basics of each matchup so what would i learn about the basics well what do i do if they dive kick well I can uh, 6P. What if they stroke? Well, I can block and then press 2K, right? If you're trying to make Celestial, you don't know who you're going to play against, right? There's 19, 20 matchups. You, you want to improve as fast as possible. And the way to improve the fastest possible is learn as much as you can about your character, right? And learn about, you know, making sure you focus on the basics that we're talking about. Getting good Oki, getting good offense. But your, your fundamentals are just really important. E okay, so even Sir Striker. Basic round start options can be important to lab against. What if I told you I don't know half the round starts for Bridget in certain matchups you don't need to know the specifics of each round start when you get to a super high level yes that's very important but as long as you have a just general idea of like what are your character's best round starts right for Bridget, for example, right? What round starts do I have? You know, a beginner player of Bridget might say I can 5P, I can 5S, or I can back off, right? But there's actually like 
tons of different options. There's 5P, there's 5K that has more active frames that, that beats out some stuff. There's a benefit to jumping back versus back dash. Instead of pressing 5S, you can do a delay 5S. You can do a walk back delay 5S. Sometimes you wanna do 5H because your reward is a little bit higher. Sometimes you just wanna block. Sometimes you wanna 2S. Sometimes you wanna do like a delay 2K to stop in a, a four dash. And labbing out all of those options against every character is really burdensome, right? What I think you should aspire to do is understand what your best round starts are and understand in what situations would I go for these round starts, right? For Milia, I use far 5S for every matchup except if they find out of a specific counter. That I think is a very good strategy if you're in 410. You know what your strongest option is. And then you know if they have a specific counter, I'm guessing one time hero has an option that will beat their counter. So again, you don't need 20 different round start options, but you should understand what your strongest options are and what to do if people can counter the strongest options are. And then apply that to every level of your gameplay, right? The last thing that I want to talk about is sometimes people just have like really high expectation for themselves. And honestly, like when I see people that haven't played that much and they're like, why am I not in Celestial? Honestly, it's usually because you just haven't played enough. You know, Celestial is a pretty hard thing to do. Um, I actually recently did a video where basically I put a survey out to people and I asked, how long does it take you to get to Celestial? And it takes the average person like 300 hours to get into celestial and i see people that you know only have like a, a 500 games a thousand games not making it to celestial and it's like that's perfectly okay you're honestly you're not doing anything wrong you just need to play more so if you don't have that time investment especially if you're new to fighting games be patient with yourself understand that it is going to take a while it takes other people a while and uh make sure you have some self-compassion it would be unfair of me to make a video on how to get to the Celestial without talking about the number of ways people cheese the Celestial system. Part of you guys have to realize the Celestial system has a lot of flaws. I'm not going to go into them, but basically sometimes it really does come down to luck. I'm not saying to cheese the system. I think the whole goal of aspiring to be Celestial is to become a strong player, right? But it's important to understand that some people do cheese the system. How does that happen? Well, you can see what matchups you're playing. So some people will avoid the bad matchups. Some people will snipe people with low VIP points. Let's say they're on all the counter something. Those people are going to be way easier to win. You know, some people will literally play a friend to get in. Some people will rage quit. Please don't do this. Or, you know, pick a top tier. Some characters are way easier to get into Celestial than others. Even myself, I'm guilty. Like, let's say if I see Umi Show come up and that's my match against the Celestial, I'm going to duck Umi Show. <laughs> I don't want to go through the Celestial challenge again. I'll play just some random person. So if you can't make it to Celestial, you know, don't be hard on yourself. Have some self-compassion because I think some people beat themselves up, not over getting Celestial, where really it's, it's an arbitrary mark. The goal should be to improve, to better yourself. And I hope some of the tools in this video kind of give you the direction to go to in order to do those things, right? Um, so yeah, anyways, guys, I, I hope this was helpful. Leave a comment down below if you have any other tips for people that get into Celestial. Like, share, and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. It really helps out the channel and helps us make more videos like this. And I did mention Meta uh, earlier if you are a celestial level player or you really want that final push to celestial and you followed all the tips in this guide consider checking out the link down in the description below anyways guys thank you guys so much for watching have a great day and i'll see you next time